Does Alzheimer's originate outside the brain? Scientists have long assumed that Alzheimer's starts in the brain, but new research suggests that might not be the case. Patients with Alzheimer's disease have abnormal deposits of amyloid beta protein in the brain, which smothers the cells and impairs nerve and memory function. Amyloid beta protein can be found in other organs apart from the brain, though because of the blood-brain barrier, the amyloid responsible for Alzheimer's was believed to only originate in the brain. When researchers use parabiosis to attach a normal mouse to one with high amyloid beta levels, the protein traveled to the normal mouse's brain, effectively causing the animal to contract Alzheimer's in just 12 months. Scientists suggest that as the blood-brain barrier weakens with age, more amyloid beta may infiltrate the brain and contribute to its deterioration. The findings indicate that future drugs might be able to halt the disease by targeting the toxic protein before it ever reaches the brain. How Science is Trying to Stop Alzheimer's New Drug Offers Hope in Fight Against Alzheimer's The drug aducanumab is believed to aid in the clearing of toxic proteins hypothesized to cause Alzheimer's disease. A recent study measured brain activity of 165 participants, some of whom received the drug once a month for up to 54 weeks, while others received a placebo. Of those who received the drug, 103 experienced a reduction in the amount of tangled amyloid beta, the toxic proteins thought to trigger Alzheimer's in their brains. For years, scientists have debated whether the buildup of amyloid beta protein causes memory loss and ultimately Alzheimer's disease. In a clinical study, researchers injected the drug aducanumab in early-stage Alzheimer's patients. One or two in every thousand of the antibodies enter the brain, where they latch on to wayward amyloid beta proteins. Researchers believe that other cells called microglia then arrive and clear the aberrant proteins from the brain. The trial's results were in favor of the amyloid hypothesis, which suggests that the elimination of the protein itself might alleviate the disease's symptoms. Two larger phase three trials are now in progress and plan to run until at least 2020. Detecting Alzheimer's Years Before Symptoms Begin Researchers at Washington University in St. Louis have developed a simple blood test that may be able to detect whether a person is developing Alzheimer's disease. Amyloid plaques, the buildup of amyloid beta proteins in the brain, start developing more than 15 years before the symptoms of Alzheimer's disease start to surface. At the moment, the only ways to monitor plaque buildup are through PET scans or spinal tap procedures. Researchers have developed a new blood test that can detect the amyloid beta buildup in the brain. The test measures the amounts of three amyloid subtypes, the peptides amyloid beta 38, 40, and 42. It has been found that the levels of amyloid beta 42 are consistently 10 to 15% lower than amyloid beta 40 in people with amyloid plaques in the brain. The blood test is said to have an accuracy rate of 89% over 20 blood samples. Researchers plan to expand the experiment to include 180 people. A breakthrough in Alzheimer's research. Researchers at MIT have discovered a new potential treatment for Alzheimer's disease that involves interfering with an enzyme that forms blockades in brain cells. Scientists have found that levels of HDAC2 enzymes are usually higher in people with Alzheimer's. Medical mice with the disease also have elevated levels of this enzyme. HDAC2 enzymes bind to genes called SP3, which in turn condenses chromatin and reduces the expression of some genes in the DNA. This results in the blockade of memory formation. Researchers isolated the particular section of HDAC2 that binds to SP3 and overproduced that fragment. These fragments bind to SP3, preventing it from binding to entire HDAC2 enzymes, thus allowing memory link genes to be expressed. Previous attempts at blocking HDAC2 would often trigger dangerous side effects by interfering with the production of red and white blood cells. The MIT method is the first procedure to have shown no interference with other enzymes. Researchers are investigating other ways to adapt the technique in human trials. Anti-inflammatory drugs could treat depression and Alzheimer's. Scientists have discovered possible links between inflammation and mood disorders, suggesting that they could be treated with anti-inflammatory drugs. Researchers have discovered a large number of people with rheumatoid arthritis also suffer from depression. 
It is possible that inflammatory chemicals interrupt the brain's production of serotonin, a key neurotransmitter linked to mood. When patients were given particular anti-inflammatory drugs, improvements in both their arthritis symptoms and mood were observed. Scientists are investigating whether targeting the immune system could treat mood disorders, such as depression and neurodegenerative diseases, including Alzheimer's disease. The precise type of inflammation that may cause mood disorders and the anti-inflammatory drugs best suited to treating it are still under research. UK scientists develop gene therapy to treat Alzheimer's. Researchers from Imperial College London have developed a gene therapy that successfully prevents the development of Alzheimer's disease in mice. Amyloid plaques are formed by a protein known as amyloid beta peptide. These clumps of protein, which are found in the brains of people with Alzheimer's disease, are believed to cause the death of brain cells. Scientists added the gene PGC1-alpha to a modified virus able to target specific cells. This modified virus was delivered directly into the brains of mice suffering early stages of Alzheimer's. The gene is said to be able to prevent the formation of amyloid beta peptide, thus preventing the formation of amyloid plaques. Lab results showed the mice that were injected with the PGC1-alpha gene developed very few amyloid plaques, while untreated mice had multiple plaques. Imperial College London reported that previous studies have suggested physical exercise and the compound Revitrol, which is found in red wine, may also increase levels of PGC1-alpha in the human body. However, the researchers of the new treatment technique suggest injections of the gene would be the most beneficial.